Hello and welcome to the video series on learning digital product release. In this video, we'll take a look at the various maturity levels in the DPR value realization journey and see a demo of how you can derive value from the first stage in the maturity lifecycle. We'll see how to manage products, versions, and product features. We'll then plan product features and versions using version planning. After we complete the version planning, we'll create and manage a release. When the release is ready, we'll create a change request for the release. The graphic you see here is ServiceNow's perspective on the adoption journey applicable for most customers aiming to implement DPR. The first step in the adoption journey focuses on defining a release process within DPR using release templates and leveraging tasks and approval tasks to manage release execution. Tasks are manual activities associated to phases of the release in DPR, and approval tasks are tasks that have approvals tied to them. At this level of maturity, you're not yet integrating with third-party tools or using release policies for release validation. At this stage, the management of release execution requires the product manager or the release manager to manually check for completion of tasks within a release phase to certify readiness before they can move on to the next phase of the release. Despite the management of release readiness being entirely manual at this stage, you still get much of the key benefits of DPR. You'll get visibility across product releases and have the ability to create change requests with release traceability and auditability. And perhaps most importantly, you gain the ability to shift left the validation activities like upstream reviews and approvals, validation of test results or security scans away from change, which often serves as the final gate before production. And instead, you have those checks happen earlier in the relevant release phases. Follow the link in the description below to learn more about the other maturity levels in this adoption journey. Let's jump into the demo and see how you can derive value from the first stage of this adoption journey. I'm logged in as Alan, the product manager. I navigate to DPR by accessing workspaces and digital product release workspace. In the DPR workspace, the home screen provides Alan with a quick snapshot of all the releases he's responsible for and their current execution statuses. I click on the four square icons to view the list of products. In the My Products tab, you see the products owned by Alan. And as the name implies, you see all the products in the All Products tab. The products you see here are listed from the application model table. If you already manage your products using business application as part of your application inventory, you must see those products listed as well. Let's open one of the products to take a look into the details. In the product overview page, we see the basic details of the product and we see a few other tabs like product features, versions and included products. The product features tab lists all the features available in the product. You can create new features by clicking on the add feature button or you could import them from development tools like Jira or Azure DevOps. We'll cover more on this in upcoming videos in this series. The versions tab displays all the product versions. In DPR, releases acts as an execution vehicle while versions represent the outcome of these releases. You can plan product features in versions and when you're ready to execute, you can create a release for the specific version. The records you see here are listed from the software model table, which is linked to the application model or products. By leveraging the existing models from CSDM, DPR helps you maintain the integrity of this CMDB. For instance, when a release is ready and the software is deployed on a configuration item or a server, you can update the server details with the most recently deployed software using the existing CMDB associations. You can create a new version by clicking on the request version action and submitting the form by providing the relevant information. Once submitted, the form generates a catalog request that is automatically approved. 
So if you prefer to implement a governance process for new version creations, you can attach an approval workflow to the request using the service catalog. I click on the release planning in the secondary navigation to visually plan the product features in versions. You see a Kanban board with backlog in the first lane followed by the versions and product features as cards. You can plan product features by dragging and dropping the cards from backlog to the various version lanes on the board. Once your planning is complete and you're ready to execute the release, you can create a release. For that, you navigate to releases on clicking on this icon. Here, you see a list of all the releases across your organizations. You can create a new release by clicking on the new button. In the create release model, you provide a name, select the product and product version, then choose a predefined release template. Release templates enable release managers to standardize the release process by predefining the phases, tasks, approvals, and policies required for different release types. This allows product managers to simply select the appropriate template at the time of release creation without needing to know the specific details for each release type. For more information on defining the release templates, refer to the link in the description below. Release targets are predetermined sets of dates when the release needs to be ready. You can define release targets using the release calendar. When I click on confirm after providing the required information, a release will be created and you will be redirected to the release page. I'm going to open an existing release and showcase the capabilities for this demo. When you click on the release name, you're taken to the release dashboard page. The dashboard page provides an overview of key details, including important dates, the overall risk score, tasks, change requests, policies, and approvals. The risk score is calculated based on a combination of overdue tasks, failed policies, and the release end date. For more detailed insights, you can click on the quality tab. Here, you'll find information about your test results, the code coverage, and security vulnerabilities. The data in this tab comes from our integrations with code orchestration tools like Jenkins and Azure DevOps. We will dive deeper into the details of these integrations in a separate video. Let's navigate to the release execution subsection to view the details of the release. The release phases, tasks, approvals, and policies were all created based on the release template I provided at the time of creating the release. We see a timeline of the release phases with active phase highlighted in color. Under the timeline, we see the details of the development phase. And as we navigate to the tasks, we see all the tasks for this development phase. We have two different types of tasks, namely manual tasks and approval tasks. Manual tasks can be assigned to individual users and can be updated manually as the work moves to in progress and complete. In case of approval tasks, the approvals are triggered to the appropriate stakeholders when the phase is started. The stakeholder for the approval tasks are defined as part of the release template. DPR makes use of the approval workflow in ServiceNow and the stakeholders can go to the approval central to approve or reject task. The task status will be updated based on the approval status. For this demo, I'm going to open the full details of the task and approve the request. Go to approvers and set it to approve. Now, when I switch back to the details tab, you see that the state of the task is set to closed complete. When I go back to the release execution page, you see that the task has moved to the close complete lane as well. Lastly, I navigate to the change request section to view all the change requests for the release. You can create the change request manually or automatically from your development pipeline. You see, I have two different change requests created for this release and one of them is created using the Azure DevOps pipeline. I'll create a new change request manually by clicking on the new button on the screen. I select a normal change type and click on next. I enter basic details and click on save to create the change request. You see that the change request is now created and also associated with the release. That's all I wanted to demo for this video. To recap, 
we showcased a quick overview of DPR's value realization adoption journey. We saw how to manage products and versions and plan product features and versions and how all this information is connected to your CMDB. We saw how to create releases for product versions using templates and release targets. And finally, we saw how to create and associate change requests to the release. We only focused on manual tasks and approvals in this demo flow. In more advanced use cases, DPR has the ability to integrate with development tools to automatically create product features in ServiceNow. We can also use the data from development tools to automate the phase gate validation using ServiceNow's policy as code engine. You can learn more about utilizing the policies and integrations in this video series. For additional resources, please navigate to the Digital Product Release Community site where you can find more helpful videos and blogs. Thank you.